Hello, and um, welcome to Chapter 6, Section 3, which is Algebra, Variables, and Expressions. This starts on textbook page 449 and goes through textbook page 452. Let's get started. Now, you want to remember that you're supposed to be copying everything that is written on the screen, even if it's also written in the textbook. So, for instance, the information here um, I, I gave you is in addition to, so you should be writing this in the margin. Um, and I wrote that the main idea here is that you're going to be, you have the original problem, you're going to substitute, and then you solve. And that'll make a little more sense as we go through the section. So right here we see on textbook page 449, I've also made a little note here, don't forget to copy all notes, examples, doodles, etc. All right, right here um, we have vocabulary startup, that's where we're going to start. So it says algebra is a language of symbols including variables. So that is including variables and it's a language of symbols. A variable is a symbol, usually a letter, used to represent a number. Okay, so it's important that you know that it's used to represent a number. And it says scan the lesson to complete the graphic organizer. So the math meaning of a variable is this. Okay, as you can see, I put the definition for the math meaning in here. It says it's a symbol, usually a letter, used to represent a number. That's what we just wrote. And then examples are X, Y, and A. The everyday meaning and the non-example are going to be here. Okay, as you can see, the everyday meaning um, of variable means it's able to change or vary, as in variable winds, so winds that could change. And a non-example of a variable would be 3, 6, and um, negative 10, because those are all numbers. And variables have to be letters. All right, under the real world link, it says a box contains an unknown number of markers. There are two, so we have that unknown. There are two markers outside the box. Okay, so we have two markers outside the box. The total number of markers is represented by the bar diagram below. So the total is represented by that bar diagram. And it says, suppose there are 14 markers in the box. So then we would just put a 14 right here unknown number of markers in the box, find the total number of markers, and then explain your answer. Okay, and as you can see, I've put the numbers there, or the answer there. It says that there should be 16 markers, and that's because you have, let's go ahead and change our color here, you have 14 markers here, and you have two outside the box, so when you add them all together, you get a total of 16 markers. So it says there are 14 markers in the box, plus the two outside the box, and 14 plus 2 equals 16. Now you're going to be looking at textbook page 450. So you want to go ahead and turn the page. You should be able to see the evaluate one step expressions at the top. So under evaluate one step expressions, it says algebraic expressions contain at least one variable and at least one operation. So an operation, remember, is going to be, um, there we go. An operation is going to be multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtracting. So you don't want to forget that. And then the variable, of course, is the number. And it says, for example, in the expression n plus 2, um, in the expression n plus 2 represents the sum of an unknown number and 2. This part right here that I circled is going to be important because those are the words. So when we go back and forth between words and expressions, you want to make sure that you know how to explain that. So any letter can be used as a variable. That's also important. N plus 2. The letter X is often used as a variable. To avoid confusion with the symbol X, there are other ways to show the multiplication. So this is the point in our chapter, in our textbook, when you want to stop using X for multiplication. So no longer do we want you to use X to symbolize multiplication. And actually, let me show you that. Okay, so I've written examples out to the side here. No longer do you want to use 2x2 to show multiplication. You want to now have 2, 2 dot 2 or 2 parenthesis 2. And the examples that they have over here um, are using x. So they have 5 dot x, which means 5 times x. They have 5 parentheses x, which also means 5 times x. And then they have finally 5x, which means 5 times x. The variables in in an expression can be replaced with any number. Once the variable has been replaced, you can evaluate or find the value of an algebraic expression. So whenever you see that word evaluate, it means to basically find the value of or solve. So evaluate. So evaluate means to solve or to find the value of. 
Okay, I'm also gonna remind you, you'll see on my screen here that I've blacked out the information. I don't want you to black out the information. I'm doing it so that I can go through step by step with you. As I write the steps, I would like you to also write the steps. So the first thing that you're gonna look at here is it says 16, evaluate 16 plus B, so there's that evaluate word. Our original problem is gonna be 16 plus B, so we wanna write our original problem. So off to the side, you wanna write original and then write the original problem like I've done here. And then you'll notice that I am going to substitute because it says, notice the B equals 25. So now we're gonna substitute 16 plus, because the 16 plus stays the same, and then we're gonna just put 25 here because we're substituting 25 for B. And you're gonna write substitute off to the side. So remember in the very first slide I said original substitute solve. Okay, and up here in this little empty space right here, um, I did the math, the 16 plus 25, and, but just below it is where that um, 41 needs to be. So you can see that I've written the answer right here. And so you wanna be working down with your expressions. So your last step here is to solve. So it should look just like this. All right, on the next slide here, you'll see evaluate x minus y if x is 64 and y is 27. So the first thing I wanna do is write my original problem, x minus y. Off to the side, I'm gonna write original. You don't have to do this always, but for right now while we're learning it, you do. So x minus y, then my next section is going to be to substitute, so write substitute. And then you actually substitute. So they said x is 64 minus y, which is 27. And I'm just gonna put my work up here so I can go 64 minus 27. Okay, and I get 37 as my answer. So that was gonna be solve. And again, as I'm showing you, I would like you to work down because I should be able to see from here to here that you substitute 27 for y. And I should always be able to see your final answer, which looks like this. You can also put a box around it. I should be able to see your very last piece as your answer. So I don't want you to show it the way that they've shown it here. This is not how I want you to do it. I, I don't want this. I want you to do it just like this, please. Right now we're looking at example three. It says evaluate six X if X is equal to one half. So we're gonna write our original problem, which is six X. And then we're gonna write off to the side original. Then we're going to substitute like we've been doing. So six times one half. Notice I used the dot. Notice if I use the X here, it would be kind of confusing because X is the variable that we're using for the one half. So we're gonna say that we substituted here. So substitute. And then our last step is gonna be to solve. So we're just gonna go, okay. One and three equals three over one. Now you'll be able to see that I'm gonna rewrite the problem here because I need to work directly from the problem. So I'm gonna go, okay, one and three and then, because I've divided both of these by two, and then we get three times one is three. So my final answer here should be three, and that is my solve section. Now I did put an equal sign here because we had a fraction, so I wanted to make sure that you were able to multiply straight across. So you'll see that they have multiply six, replace the one half, and they also got three. And there you go. All right, so now is the point that you want to pause the video so that you can go ahead and work on A, B, C, and D. So go ahead and do that now. And also, I'm just gonna show you um, with A, B, C, and D, you can write the original problem. You don't have to write original substitute solve now. So we've got the original problem. We're gonna substitute six for A, so six plus eight, and then we're gonna solve it. So six plus eight is going to give us 14. And you do need a box around your final answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at B. So again, we're starting with A minus B, which is our original problem. We're gonna substitute, oops, we're gonna substitute six for A minus four for B, and we're getting that information right here. So six and four, that's where we're getting that. It says A equals and B equals. And then our final step right here is going to be six minus four is two, and we're gonna put a box around that. All right, let's go ahead and look at C and D on the next slide. All right, now we're looking at C and D. So for C, you've got A times B, and it says where A is going to be six times B, which is four. And so now we find out that six times four is 24, and that is our final answer for C. 
And our last problem here that we have is 9C, or 9 times C. Then we're going to substitute. We have 9 times 1 third. And then remember, because it's a fraction, we need to work from the problem. I'm going to write the problem again on the solve line so that I can then work from the problem. So I'm going to mark that out, divide each one of those by 3. So I get 1 here, and I get 3 here. And then 3 times 1 is 3, and that is my final answer. So you should have gotten 3 for D. All right, let's go ahead and head on over to textbook page 451. It should look like this with evaluate multi-step problems written at the top in the pinkish color. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that first thing. So it says to evaluate multi-step expressions, replace each variable with the correct value and follow the order of operations. So following the order of operations is going to be important. So let's go ahead and look at this first one. And again, just because I black it out, I don't need you to black it out. I'm just doing that so we have some space to work in without being cluttered by what they've told us the answer is. Okay, and you'll see that I wrote the original problem, 5t plus 4, and I made my t have a little loop at the bottom because I, it's hard for me sometimes to differentiate between the t and the plus sign. So 5t plus 4, and then our next line, of course, as usual, is going to be to substitute. So we're going to have 5, and I'll keep everything a different color here, 5, and they told us that t was going to be 3. So 5 times 3 plus plus four. And actually, let me go back one step. Five times, and then we're gonna get the three here. Okay, so the only thing I've color coded here is that three so that you can see the substitution. So five times three plus four. And then our next step is gonna to be to solve it using the order of operations. So remember, we're gonna do the five times three first, which gives us 15 plus four. And then 15 plus four is gonna give us 19. So as you'll see here, that is, oops, that is also what they got. So all that looks good. Um, and again, you want to make sure that you're working downward in a V. It should look like that when you're finished. All right, now we're looking at example five. So the first thing we do is 4x squared, and it says if x is 1 8. So this one might be a little tricky. Let's go ahead and get our white out here. So 4 times... And remember, x squared is not 1 8 times 2. So we need to make sure that we're putting in... 1 8 times 1 8. All right, good. And so now we can process this in whatever order we would like to because it, it's the um, commutative property of multiplication. So I can cross simplify if I would like to. I can also, let's see. Yeah, let's just cross simplify one of these guys out. So we're gonna divide by four. So we get one here and eight divided by four is two. And now what we have left over is all ones on the top, and we have an eight times two on the bottom, which is 16. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move this down a little bit and change this because, um, as I said before, I wanted to have a separate line so I could see the substitute and the solve. So hang tight for me one second. Okay, I'm back now. And as I mentioned, I wanted to go ahead and, because I would like to be able to see your original line, your substitute line, and then your solve line. So I don't want this second line right here that I'm pointing to to be all messy with the, um, with the actual work. So I can cross simplify out that four and the eight again. So we've got one here and two here. And now one times one times one gives me one. And then two, which is right here, times eight is 16. So our final answer here is gonna be one sixteenth and they also got 1 16th. All right. Moving on now to number six, let's go ahead and take a look at this. You don't necessarily need to fill in the boxes. Um, you can write this out to the side. First, you're gonna write your original problem, then you're going to substitute. And as you notice, I substituted the 1 -fifth for the A, and we got that from right there, I pointed to that. So, and that's 10 times 1 -fifth. whoops. So let me see if I can clean that up a little bit. So it'll be 10 times 1 fifth. They've also written it as 10 with the parentheses 1 fifth, and it means the same thing. And then the next piece, remember, we need to have another line written here so that we can work from it. So we have 10 times 1 fifth plus 7. 
And this is just so that we can show the nice clean um, substitute line, which is right there. So now I'm going to cross simplify my 5 and 10, and I get 1 here and 2 here. So I'm left with all 1's on the bottom. And the reason, remember, the reason I'm doing that 10 and 1 fifth first is because we're multiplying. So now we have 2 times 1 is 2. And I'm kind of running out of space here. Plus 7. And then just below that, you're going to want to have 9. All right, there we go. Now we have the 2 plus 7 at the very bottom. And we have enough space for the 9 that goes on the very, very bottom because that's our answer. So let's go ahead and see what they've shown us here. And they've done the same thing. So you want to make sure that this is what your example number six looks like. All right, you want to pause the video here, and then you want to go ahead and do E, F, and G on your own. You want to keep in mind that you need to do the original, substitute, and solve for each problem here. All right, and as you can see, we went ahead and did E now. We substituted 12 for D. Then I put a box around the 2 times 12 because of the order of operations. We're going to do that 2 times 12 first, which gives us 24, minus 5 is 19. Let's go ahead and look at F. So as you can see, I've written the original problem, which was 50 minus 3D in yellow. Then I have substituted the 12 for D, so I have 50 minus 3 times 12. Our next step is going to be to put a box around the 3 times 12 because the order of operations says that we need to do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. So 12 times 3 is 36. And remember, if you need to do any um, multiplication, because you don't know what 12 times 3 is, you want to do that off to the side somewhere. So like this, 12 times 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3, so it doesn't mess up the um, line by line for your actual equation. So now you have 50 minus 36, and in your last um, section, you're just going to go ahead and subtract, and you get 14 for F. Okay, now we're going to be looking at G. So for G, the original problem is 9E squared, so we're going to write the original problem, and now we're going to substitute. Okay, and on the next line, you're going to see that you are going to solve from there. So you'll have the 9 times 1 third times 1 third. And that's because it's 1 third squared. So then we're going to cross simplify. And we can also cross simplify again because we have this 3 here and a 3 here. So that's 1 and that's 1. So now all the way across the board we have 1. So our final answer for that problem is 1. <coughs> all right, now we're going to be looking at textbook page 452. At the top, again, please don't um, black the stuff out like I have. It's just I don't like the distraction of the answer being there already. All right, so at the top it says... Um, Khalil is wrapping a gift for his brother's birthday. The box has side lengths that are one and a half feet. So you have one and a half feet. Um, use the expression 6s squared. So the expression that they've asked you to use is 6s squared, where s represents the side length. So one and a half, I'm sorry, so one half is going to be equal to s. To find the surface area of the box he is wrapping. Write your answer in square feet. So don't forget to write your answer in square feet. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is start with our original equation, which as we can see from right here was 6s squared. The next thing that we need to do is substitute. So we're going to have 6 times, and remember our substitute is going to be 1 half times 1 half. Okay, because that's s squared. Sorry about that, that was the bell. <laughs> and now we're going to solve. And remember, when we go to solve, we're gonna do, and I'm just gonna move this over here so that we have some room. We're gonna do six times one half times one half so that I can actually work from it. So now we're gonna cross simplify this one, in, I'm sorry, this two and six, and we're gonna get one here and three here. So now we're gonna get three times one times one is three, and one times two on the bottom is two. And we're going to change that into a mixed number, which is 1 and 1 half feet squared. So you should be able to see what they've done here as well. All right, so now what you need to do for homework is going to be the guided practice. You need to do it exactly the way that we did it um, in the previous examples. Since the original problem is written there for you, I don't mind if you work from the original problem. So just below the original problem, for instance, for number one, it should say 3 plus 4. And then below the 3 plus 4 is where you're going to put the 7. So your homework for tonight is going to be textbook. 
page 452, which is what we're looking at right here. And you need to complete problems one through seven. Okay, one through seven, and I look forward to seeing you next class period. Don't forget, you have to show everything going down into a V. And also for number seven, um, actually they already gave you the um, e expression, so you just have to plug it in. Look forward to seeing you next class.